So about a year ago, I actually made quite a lot of videos about Manchester United is the club that I have been supporting since my granddaddy had passed away. We've been through a lot of ups and downs, but lately it is looking a little bit better. I know some of you don't like the videos about football, but I honestly couldn't care. We're back to back sitting in a cardboard box. Do not ask me why I'm sitting in a cardboard box, but I'm actually going to keep this cardboard box because look at this. This is awesome. So yeah, hope you guys are all doing well. We're going to be talking about United, the progress, and also speak about some situations within the club. And we're going to also be discussing Arsenal at the moment because they are doing very well. When I think of Manchester United, I think of my club, the club that I've always had love and passion for. Now, as you know, the current coach is Eric Ten Hag. A lot of people were skeptical and said, hey, why are we getting this dude? He has no experience in Premier League. People must have forgot what he has done with Ajax and what he has done with Ajax in the Champions League. I always knew Eric Ten Hag would be the right man for the job. Then let's go switch back to a year ago. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Oh boy, that wasn't a good year for us United fans, was it? Mm -mm -mm. Not to mention the team was horrendous. I mean, you know, when Ronaldo came last year, I was like, oh wow, it's looking good. You know, we got Pogba, we got Varane, we got Ronaldo. For one second, we were actually thinking, oh, we could actually contend for number two, number one. Ye yeah, that didn't really go the way we wanted to do. It was not the best season. Matter of fact, it was a horrible season. You know, the loss against Liverpool, 5-0. The loss against Watford, 4-1. 4-0. Ironically enough, Donny van der Beek was the only person who managed to score against Watford. I think it was in the last game of Ola until he got sacked, so that was really interesting. I'm going to also discuss about Donny van der Beek, who, if you've noticed, has started two games, the past two games this week, which I've got to say. What are people expecting from a dude who hasn't played in the starting eleven in over a year? What can you expect from a dude that hardly plays, who's just come back from a few months of an injury? Give the dude time. Now, we've always said Donny van der Beek was phenomenal at Idox and he could be so good at United. But give the kid some time. We got to also speak about the Aston Villa game that happened two days ago. Now, look, I was very frustrated at the first half of the game. You know, no chances, boring. It also says a lot about our midfield when McTominay and Fred were playing. You see the lack of interest, the lack of wanting to get the ball, lack of creativity without Bruno Fernandes and Ericsson. It's like people always say, if Ericsson doesn't play at the moment, there's no point in playing, basically, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but you understand what they're coming from. Fred is not the right man for the role. We've said it for so long. How long have we been saying Fred is not good enough? Casemiro actually has taken over McTominay's position, when I have to say Casemiro is playing really good. I was first a little bit skeptical Skeptical, skeptical about him. I can't pronounce that word correctly in the beginning of the season because you know a little bit of mistakes. This and that. People were said, "Oh man, they're just a panic buy." No, I do believe it was a backup for in case we couldn't get a Frankie De Jong. What a pain in the ass that dude is, Frankie De Jong. For four or five months, we were chasing him. Barca wanting a hundred million, and we basically say, "No, we're not paying twenty million dollars in wages just because you guys don't have the money." That's why they wanted 100 million, so they didn't have to owe him 20 million in wages, which is a ridiculous joke. I mean, it's ironic, you know, Barcelona were the team that and club that were saying, you know, we can't afford Messi's wages two months later buy a 60 million uh, euro player from City. What, right? It, who did they buy again? I forgot the midfielder of City, which I forgot his name already. I want to quickly switch over and transition to Arsenal. Arsenal have really surprised me so far. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know how, I don't know what to say, really. They are playing out of the, out of the league right now. In a way of, I have not seen Arsenal play like this in a few years. And, you know, can Arsenal win this season? Arsenal will have a very good chance if they continue like this. The defense is set up. Obviously, they have to lose against United. That is just like, they play so well and then they fuck up against United. Chelsea lose against us. We're not going to talk about the City game, right? 5-1. Was it 5-1? 6-2. Yeah, embarrassing, right? It was bad. But I think with Eric Ten Hag got a good vision we're gonna go back to that just now but Arsenal I've got to give my credit you know we always say you know Arsenal this and that what a player Gabriel Martini Martinelli is I gotta hand it over to you Arsenal people very good midfield you go make sure you keep him and don't sell him and Jesus as well it's a very good striker that's something Arsenal had been missing for a few years as a really good striker as a poacher and I always said Jesus was phenomenal it's just shame he never got the opportunity at Man City because 
of Kun Aguero. It makes kind of sense. But I think Pep Guardiola would never want to have him as a striker to begin with because he's a bit of a he's a bit of an odd dude. But he has the vision, though. Obviously, let's not forget City had to spend over a billion to just get the right team, and they finally managed for years. They were struggling for a while. Don't be don't be fooled. And now United's in the struggle a little bit. I genuinely do believe that Arsenal will win the league this season. I'm not even going to expect them to win. I know they will win because Liverpool is underperforming. Newcastle is playing very, very well since the new owners is and this and that. They've bought a few players. Kieran Trippier, Dubravka has gone to United, although that's a loan deal, I think, because Dean Henderson is now at Sheffield United. No, at uh, no, he came from Sheffield two years ago, two and a half years ago. And now he's at Nottingham Forest, which not, Nottingham Forest are so shit. How can you be lost in the league and have bought 25 new players and you can't even manage to play good? I mean, that's just a ridiculous amount of players. That was never going to work, let's be honest. Now, let's go back. What has been around United for a few weeks? This whole thing with Ronaldo. Now, look, I'm just going to be straight up honest at the point. I love Ronaldo, but I think it's best for both the club and the team and him to just leave in the transfer window coming up next two months. He, he has to go. I'm sorry. He obviously doesn't fit Ten Hag's team play. If you look at the stats and everything, as weird as it sounds, we're better off without Ronaldo. And I just want to let people know, let's not forget what he did for us last year. You know how much that man has helped us last year with the goal contributions in the Premier League, in the Champions League. I remember against Villarreal, 95th minute, he scored the late winner, bro. I was at my tiny house screaming my lungs out. I may have woken up the neighbors, but I simply don't care. I was so happy. But we've been struggling, and there is no denying that. And still, I look back, it is unfortunate that we couldn't have gone, couldn't have gotten Frank de Jong. It's unfortunate, but then yet again, I look at Casemiro and Eriksen. Phenomenal. However, when they don't play or are injured, we can't simply rely on McTominay and Fred. I, I, I'm sorry, bro. We can't rely on them. Well, actually, I'm going to be honest. McTominay has been pretty decent lately, so i got to give him credit. But Maguire played against Aston Villa. What is that to say? I mean, honestly, what is that to say? As we would say in the Netherlands, he's a big lump. He's a, he's a fucktard, basically, as my dad would say. A moron. And it, it baffles me that he gets chosen over Tamori in the England squad. Bro, the favoritism is ridiculous. Sancho doesn't get caught up, but Harry Maguire does? I mean, come on, bro. That is some favoritism bullshit. And I don't even support England. I despise the England team. But the fact that you don't even bother bringing up Jaden Sancho, but Jack Greedy should do and Maguire you do. Come on, bro. We ain't stupid. We know. You, you. He's probably very good friends with them, but I don't know. I think it's ridiculous that Southgate hasn't caught up Sancho. But I want to speak about Sancho as well. Sancho has been very disappointing lately. You know, 70 million last season, a lot of expectations nowadays. You know, if, if, if you pay 30, 50, 60 million, yeah, you're going to have a lot of expectations and stuff you have to do. You don't have the time to just, you know, get used to shit. Yeah, it's you either stay or you fuck off next year. That's as simple as I get. Nowadays, especially in the Premier League, you don't get the time and chance to get used to stuff. You have to adapt so quickly to the game. You don't have time. It took Casemiro three, four games to finally adapt, but he's adapted and he's playing really well. Defensively and offensively, Casemiro was, at the end of the day, a brilliant... It was a bit of a, uh, we've got to get somebody so fast before the transfer deadline ends. I'll be honest, it was a panic buy, definitely, without a doubt. But at the end of the day, it worked out. Garnacho is one of those players I want to also discuss. Wow, he has been playing phenomenal for the past three games. I am looking very forward to his nearby future, what he's going to bring to United if we don't decide to sell him because this is the thing united has when they got good players they don't use them and they make them rot away look what happened to jesse lingo two years ago was playing phenomenal at west ham we had the option to to sell him for 40 million pounds to west ham we decided we we wanted to keep him and we wanted to use him we didn't use him an entire season and we just only got 8 million for him to nottingham which is such a blasphemy of the owners like what what is going on Pogba left last season. I think actually Pogba left a few months ago. I'm glad he fucked off. That was one of the guys that I was always like. Pogba was never going to play for United for the badge. Simply as that. He was only there just to collect money. I can guarantee that. Pogba had a few good games. But there was no way in, in my life can I say Pogba is better than Kevin De Bruyne. Absolutely not. If I had to choose between Pogba and De Bruyne, Kevin De Bruyne. Easily. Way better for me personally. Does more, isn't lazy, doesn't bitch him out, does what he's getting paid for. Pogba, on the other hand, didn't do that much. Although I'm going to have to be honest and straight up front right now. 
the media in the UK is honestly very biased when it comes to players. Eric Bailly, when he's been playing at United, he's going to return next season, which I hope we keep him. I've always loved Eric Bailly. It's just so unfortunate that he gets injured all the fucking time, bro. The biased media in the UK is ridiculous. The amount of hate Pogba did get was insane. And then you look at Maguire, oh, you know, he just needs a little bit of time, you know. But when Pogba plays bad, you say, oh, man, this and this and that. Like, how biased can you be as a media outlet? You ought to be ashamed, especially the sun with the fake news they spread all the time. Ridiculous. I'm going to end this video very, very shortly. But I want to just kind of discuss and briefly talk about Eric Ten I'm looking very forward to his future. Like I said, this is going to have to be a long-term project. We cannot expect this man to change the whole goddamn squad within this year. It is simply not possible and it is not manageable. There are some players who have to, unfortunately, go either this transfer window or next year. Players that I want to leave, Wambi Saka. We need a backup right back if the lot is injured or is whatever the case could be. Because Wambi Saka is just simply not good enough and doesn't fit Ten Hag's schedule and what he wants. Luke Shaw, on the other hand, been playing really nice and Tyro Malasia. I enjoy him a lot. I, I think he's just a little bit better than Luke Shaw, but he's to their own, I suppose. We need to aim for a striker. Because if Ronaldo does decide to leave within the next two months, we are absolutely fucked. We have no official striker. And we simply cannot rely on Rashford. I'm very sorry. I love the dude. I really, really love Rashford. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's our club icon, really. He's the he's kid at United. But we can simply not rely on Rashford the whole time. Because if you see the amount of chances he misses, headers, this and this and that, it's got something to do with, obviously, he's not in form. We've, we've seen that problem. There may be something behind the scenes playing on. We don't know. It's also none of our business to do, let's just say that, right? Rashford is a very good player. We all know the talent he has, just like Anthony Marshall. That's the only striker we have. But he's injured so often, it's like a fucking plague with these French players, bro. They get injured every time. It is, uh, dude, I cannot tell you how many times these players get injured. Not to mention the World Cup is starting so soon, which is such an F up, honestly. During the season and this and that, Marco Royce is injured, Ver Werner is injured, some other players are injured, and it makes you think, why the hell are we playing this? Money, duh. The, the UEFA only cares about money, bro. They don't care about nothing else. Let's be honest there. Somebody that I would really love, or actually two people I would really love to see at United, is Victor Oshiman, Napoli, or either Jordi Gakpo. I think... Jordi Gakpo, personally, my preference, would be him. Something about him, I like him, I like his length, he's got speed, he's got positioning. Because let's face it, it's not going well with Ronaldo at United, not just play-wise, but attitude-wise. I was very disappointed a few weeks ago when we had played Tottenham. His attitude, it was disgusting, and I don't care what you think or say. No one and nobody is bigger than the club itself. I have my most utter respect for Ronaldo. That incident that he did... That action made me think, dude, you cannot just do those things. We we love you as a player, but you can simply not do that. And he didn't get away with it. He got a million pound fine or something like that. He got a big, big, nasty, fancy fine, which is something I would dream of. Half a million, Christ above. Most people don't even make that much money in their life. And he was banned for two games, which I agree with. We cannot let that type of stuff slide through the club. Eric Tanakh has said, listen, this is what I want. Do what I do. Simple as that. And if you don't agree with it, exit is right there. Hey, Alex Ferguson didn't fuck around with the players. If you don't like what, what I do, get your bags and get out the club. We'll replace you. No need. So, it's 50-50. Ronaldo is not enjoying we at United because of lack of play. I understand. But somewhere it's also like, you have to give room eventually for the new generation. I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta say it. You have to give room to the newer generation. And everybody's saying, oh, you know, no club wants Ronaldo. That is not true. That is not true. I don't know why people keep saying that. You've got to understand, and I've said this before. He has a half a million pound wage a week. He's making 22 million a year just getting paid from a salary. Most clubs don't have that type of money for a player's salary. That is a shitload of money for a 37 year old. Let me tell you that. That is a lot of money. So you saying, oh, but no club wants him. That is bullshit. Most clubs cannot afford that type of financial stuff. They can't. 22 million wages a year. You know how much? That's 40 million plus in two years. You know what type of class player you could make from that money or buy from that type of money? It's bizarre, bro. Anyways, whatever happens, I support Eric Tenoch. He has my full support. And I'm actually very glad to see Donny from the big play lately. Obviously, I know some people aren't satisfied with this play. 
give the kid time. You cannot expect someone who's been injured and hasn't played in so long to just fucking be world class. It don't happen like that. Garnacho, future star. We have to keep him at any means. Do not let that kid go. We have to way too many wingers, but we need to focus this upcoming season on a striker. I don't care who it is, as long as we have a striker. That's the most important thing for United is make sure we qualify for Champions League and we get a quality striker, even if that means we have to spend 100 million. Then let it be lower. Let it be 100 million then. If that's what it takes to get the striker we need, do it. Stop messing around. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below. And also, yeah, about Liverpool. Let's just be honest here. Since Sadio Mane left for Bayern, it's gone downhill. But hey, Liverpool is still doing well regardless. But not as good as the two, three years before. Because you can see the difference without Sadio Mane. He was like a very vital poison to the team, if that makes any sense. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I will check you later. Peace out.